Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel and to part two of the Ultimate Tanking Guide from Zero to Hero. If you're looking for a full list of topics in this guide series, please check out the description below as I'm going to try and keep these videos as lean and focused as possible on their particular topics. So part two is all about enmity, aggro, and how to keep track of aggro. Single target, multiple target, how aggro is calculated using your enmity toggle and aggro abilities, and what is the difference between a main tank and an off tank exactly. And of course, as always, I'll be giving my own personal experience to give this guide a flavorful twist and a bit of soul, rather than just bark definitions at you because I don't think anyone really likes that. At least I know that I hate that. So let's talk about aggro. So what exactly is aggro? It is the special number that determines which player character the particular target or set of targets in a pack will attack. This is often called enmity, threat, or hate. These terms all refer to the same concept, aggro, which is what we're talking about here. So how aggro works is that the player with the highest number of aggro, or you could think about it as aggro points if you want to kind of pointify it, will be the target of the particular non-player character. This acts the same way whether it is a ladybug outside of Limsa Lominsa or Leviathan Savage. Really, true facts. There are two primary ways to keep track of aggro. In the party bar to the side, you can see immediately below each job icon that there is a bar here. This is a bar representing how much enmity each player in the party has. Such as if you look at my bar here as Gunbreaker, you can see that it is currently yellow. But if you look at my main tank's enmity bar, then you can see that it is currently full. It's fully filled and colored red. Now if you look at the rest of the party's bars, you can see that they are all nearly empty. And so how that works is that the more full your bar is, the more aggro you have. The player with the full and red colored bar is the target and the opponent will be attacking this player. The so-called full bars represent the player with the maximum aggro of the party. All of the other levels of the aggro bars for the rest of the party are how much aggro that particular player in that party has relative to the player in your party with the most aggro. Or another way to put it is that in this particular screenshot, you can see that the main tank has a red bar and that almost no one else's comes close. This means that the main tank has generated tons of aggro and has much, much, much more than the rest of the party. My bar, the next highest up, is colored yellow and this means that I am the closest person and the most at risk of taking away aggro from the boss if I ever get back up there. But let's say that the main tank isn't actually keeping a massive amount of aggro compared to the rest of the party, then these bars will be closer to being full, as in the rest of the parties. Which is going to mean that the difference between the main tank's total aggro points and that the rest of the parties is not actually all that different, so they're more at risk of a party member if they get a really big burst, maybe taking away aggro. But we're about to talk in a minute about how that's not really realistic. But let's hold on a second. Before I start talking about calculations and math and aggro, let's talk about the second UI element, which is called the enemy list. And that's specifically what's called in the UI. And so this is a user interface element that is very, very different from the aggro bars that we just talked about. And it does, however, serve a very similar purpose. They act very differently. They have different use cases of when, but I'll talk to you about that in a bit. But unlike the party aggro bars underneath the job icons of your party, this looks at aggro from the viewpoint of the enemies near you. So complete opposite viewpoint. This can represent many enemies at once, making it a handy tool for dungeons and farming packs of enemies. So let's look at it now. So I just pulled this cracked Ronk and Thorn as a scholar, and I have a chocobo in my party at the same time, meaning that you can also see the party enmity bar below its chocobo, well, uh, job icon? Yeah, um, let's call it the chocobo job icon. But let's look at how these bars interact with one another. So I stop attacking the monster but keep letting my Eos heal me and my chocobo, which will generate aggro, disclaimer. But you can see how eventually over time the chocobo takes aggro from me from the enmity bar, slowly raising over time. At the same point in time though, observe how this enmity list shows the icon going from flashing red, warning that I personally have aggro on this mob and it's attacking me, into an orange shield, meaning that I have slightly less aggro but I'm still at risk, and then a yellow icon, meaning even less aggro, to eventually a green icon, meaning that I'm finally safe. But why would we prefer this over the party list? Well, let me show you. I can collect multiple mobs and keep track of their aggro on me from here. All of them at once. 
That being said, when and why would I use each of these elements? First off, the party list is just sort of built in. If you have the party list showing, then you'll just get this as a massive perk. Honestly, the party UI element is kind of amazingly well designed. It... I digress. But on the other hand, if you're just looking at group aggro, this becomes much harder to tell in an area of effect dungeon situation just from the party bars. And that is where the second UI element shines. But that element too is not without flaws. You can see how much your current aggro on the target ranks to other allies on your party, as that is not an aggro bar on the enemy list, but instead an HP bar listing. Okay, okay, that's nice, that's nice. That's how we keep track of aggro, but how do we actually keep aggro? And reality is that this was mostly simplified with Shadowbringers expansion, if I'm being honest. Now we have it so that all of the various tank stances for each tank increase aggro generation dramatically. And I'm not exaggerating. For all intents and purposes, if you have tank stance on, there should be no realistic way to rip aggro off of yourself outside of specific tank commands like Shirk or Provoke. How tank stance works is that normally you generate aggro through things like healing or dealing damage. Now tank stance takes these and amplifies them massively. And if you hit a monster with a tank stance, you're going to generate tremendously more aggro than if you didn't have tank stance on and hit it. And people might be like, oh, is that hyperbole? No, it's quite a huge difference. It's very different from last expansion. And likewise, since tanks are the only role with tank stance, you should easily manage aggro in a party, as long as your co-tank isn't being a bit of a jerk. Just make sure that you keep your tank stance on and that you're doing your optimal DPS rotation in single target scenarios and hitting all enemies when doing an area of effect pull and you honestly should be good. This should not be a concern. And truly, it really is that easy now, which is a huge relief to some, but it has also caused some controversy for some players who enjoyed the more in-depth aggro management and swapping and... That's far out of scope for this video. I do sometimes miss my warrior tanking though. Now before I end this video, I want to talk about what is a main tank and what is an off tank. Because it's very hard to have a discussion on aggro without defining these things. And this, for the record, if you're in a party of only four people and you're the only tank, you're just the main tank. I don't think we even call it a main tank, but that's what you basically are. But we are talking about main tank and off tank, which can only happen when you have a party with two different tanks in that party. Or alternatively, if you're in an alliance raid, then you have a bit more concerns, but same kind of principle applies. You just really have one main tank in that situation and two off tanks. And main tank is a term I have definitely heard some people have different interpretations of, but in my experience, the definition that I'm going with is the one I've seen the most of. So the main tank in this definition is kind of a tag. So you have a tag with main tank on it and you clip it onto a tank. And this is given to the tank that pulls and holds maximum aggro on the boss first, tanking the boss's attacks first. First. That's the key word here. First is what I'm going with. They continue to call the tank the main tank regardless if the so-called off tank, the tank that does not hold aggro on the target first, does eventually take aggro off the, of the main tank. But we will talk about tank swapping in a future video in this series, but realize for now, just for now have it in your mind, that sometimes the tank that holds aggro first will want to lose aggro and pass off the responsibility of being wailed on by the target to the other tank. But in this definition, the title of main tank is sticky. It is always on that tank. They're not removing that tag that says main tank. It's on them. That tank, regardless of if they are alive, if they are dead, if they are flung across the field, or any other mechanic, they will always be called the main tank because they pulled the boss first. The second tank, however, will always be called the off tank, regardless if they are being the one smashed by the boss, having their turn being wailed on. This can be regarded as a separation of responsibilities and various mechanics to be encountered during a fight. The main tank will be assigned particular tasks to do, and the off tank will be assigned other tasks to do over the course of the fight. This has everything to do with responsibilities, and the moniker main tank and off tank can sometimes be a misnomer, depending on the mechanics of the fight. Sometimes the off tank will be the one holding aggro on the boss and being whacked across their backside for minutes on end, as the so-called main tank just walks through tethers or balls. But the main difference is more, quote unquote, who gets their backside paddled by the boss first than anything else. Truly, in my experience, that's been what it's been. <laughs> 
from there it's just all responsibilities for mechanics from there so what do i mean by responsibilities say the off tank has off tank please run into balls before they hit the party to prevent the party from taking damage main tank continue to hold the boss steady in the center of the field off tank please stand on healer b main tank please stand on healer a that sort of thing it's just titles and responsibilities from there anyhow that is all for the second part of this guide i hope that you enjoyed it and learned a thing or two and as always, any likes, comments, and subscribes are super incredibly appreciated. I can't say just how much all the support and love means to me. Honestly, thank you all so, so much. I'm I'm actually genuinely amazed that we've come this far together. Is that bad to say? <laughs> At least I'm honest. Anyhow, if you have any mechanics or concerns about tanks or any thoughts, please let me know in the comment section down below. I will be reading them and keeping my eyes out for whatever people are kind of looking for in the future guides because I am still making them as I go. And I'd be more than happy to try and edit any future videos with these concerns addressed and get us all happy and excited about tanking. Let's get, let's get everyone feeling good and positive about this. Let's get rid of the tank anxiety, which definitely is something looming over newer players. Anyhow, that is all for this section. See you soon with part three. Happy tanking.